Welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage, everybody. Uh, this is part of my motor series. This, of course, is the motor uh, from the Singer Slantomatic. This specific motor is from the Singer 301. Keep in mind that if you uh, have a Singer 400 series, 500 or 600 series that is a Slantomatic, it may not take this exact motor. The motor will resemble this because um, they are uh, very similar in design, but they may have different specifications. So again, this is only for the 301. Um, and I want to point out this, of course, uh, I told you guys it looked like an ice cream cone to me, but you may, you may, who knows what you think uh, of its design. But it is a worm gear motor, but a very different design from the potted motor series. Now, the first thing I want to do is get a look at the commutator and the brushes. In order to do this, there are um, access screws that I want to remove. Now note that the screws are on the end where you see this little plate. You may or may not have the plate here. It may be somewhere else. But it's going to be on this Bakelite plastic end. On the other side of the motor are also two very long bolts. Those actually hold the two halves of the motor together. I am not loosening those because that's not what I'm actually doing here. That's not what I'm trying to access. If any of you ever take these motors completely apart, there is a clip inside that sits between the Bakelite housing above and the, uh, the motor, uh, the, the body of the motor. And if you take this apart, watch for that clip because it can fall on the floor, it can disappear in the motor somewhere, and if you don't know that it even exists, I learned this the hard way, <laughs> that it has to go back in its proper spot in order for this motor to come back together and be properly uh, reassembled. So it's a little clip. It's, I don't know, it's almost a little Z-shaped clip. It's probably three quarters of an inch. Um, but again, be aware it's in there. Uh, but that's not what we were doing today. We are going to come again to the, to the uh, this would have been the side of the motor that you see from underneath that we took out. Uh, you want to see the video on removing a slantomatic motor. So anyway, each there are two straight head screws uh, underneath these two spaces. So I'm going to use my just waiting to, for the there we go, waiting for it to seat, and I'm going to turn and see. And the screw was a little little sticky, but it came loose. Always be extra careful here because. This plastic is Bakelite, okay? And Bakelite, by nature, even when it was new, it's a hard plastic. It was one of the first, uh, very durable. You know, we have lots of uh, antiques that are made from Bakelite, old radios and other, other consumer items. But it's very, it's a brittle plastic. Uh, again, it's not just because it's old plastic. It was always that way. So take extra care. Never, uh, when we put these screws back in, we're gonna be extra careful. You can get them snug, but don't over tighten them or you will crack the plastic. Now, I'm taking this little piece off. Be careful not to lose my attachment bolts. What do we got here? This is, I don't know what this is stuck on the edge here. I can't tell if it's, oh, it's old grease. For whatever reason, somebody put grease in there. Grease doesn't belong here. Uh, now, they, this may be close to our bearings, and that could be part of the source. Sometimes with these motors, you will see a grease uh, port. It looks like a little chrome tube, and it will sometimes be sticking up. But at some point, Singer did away with that, and you can see here, there's a, this is a, a housing for the motor where uh, I believe, I'll have to double check to see, I'm pretty sure these use grease and not oil, okay, for this bearing here. But I will uh, at some point uh, explain why there is, um, there was that, that 30 weight oil I had in the first video. Okay, so what do we got here? What can we see? Well, we can see one of the brushes, right? And the brush is held in place. Um, under like a little tension spring. Now there's a little trick here uh, that's kind of clever. This brush holder, you can actually inspect the brush without taking this off. This holder comes out and it can go back in. It's attached to a wire 
So you want to be extra careful with because that wire is soldered onto this little little uh, sort of scythe shaped spring, I guess you'd call it. So be gentle with that. You don't want to disturb that wire connection. But notice that there's a slit in the side of the uh, brass piece that holds the brush. <clears throat> and what I can do is I can take a flashlight and I can actually see, and I can actually point to this. I don't know if it'll show up on camera today. We've got a little bit of an overcast day. But if I bring it up close, notice that, let's get as much light on this as we can. Follow it down, and right here, there, it goes from being dark to sort of a gray. And there's the brush. So I have just under a half an inch in brush length. So I know that my brushes are you know, not anywhere near needing replacing. I usually replace them when they are a quarter of an inch or shorter. While we're at it, of course, we will take uh, the other little, uh, this is like a little cover, if you will. There, there's a cover for each area of the brush, brushes. Make sure my screwdriver gets seated before I start turning it. Comes. And then again, I'm going to take, sometimes the bolt will come out and you'll want to take this piece. Sometimes if it doesn't come straight out, it, you can kind of push and it'll sort of slide up. And on that end, you also see some, there's some grease in there. I don't know why. Uh, so you see the same thing on the other side. You see, uh, you see the commutator in here, that copper ring is our commutator. And I can also see on this side, I can inspect the brush and I'm gonna get my flashlight and see if that helps put a little bit more light in there. Okay guys, I think this will actually help if I get it at the right angle. Now if you look where I'm shining the light, look where my finger is, the tip of my finger, that's the top of the brush, uh, the brush holder and follow that middle line it's dark and then right around in the middle in the center it starts to look gray and that's you're seeing the brush what a clever thing to be able to look at the brushes without taking them out that's very useful now uh, some people have a technique where they go in and you can see here I'm going to show you the commutator and I don't know if you guys can see but there's the commutator and in the back you can see uh, it's a little thicker back there, and this shows that, you know, over time this one was used. It still has copper and thickness. It's still more than functional, but this is, uh, again, a way, there's a way to clean this without grinding it. Because as I've mentioned before, you know, in the past, I used to sand all of the commutators down until they were a shiny penny. It would get rid of all the tarnish, and of course it got rid of the, the dust from the brushes. Well, if you may have seen one, as you may have seen on one of my other motor videos, I now clean my commutator not with sanding, but with 91% uh, uh, rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. And I do this because it gets virtually all of the the uh, any kind of foreign dust that's on there off. And even though the commutator may have a little color stain, it may not shine exactly like a penny, although we'll get close. It helps preserve the life of the motor. If you take any kind of abrasion to a commutator, you've got to be careful and gentle with it because you can literally uh, take away all the years of life that you have left in your motor because once that copper is gone, the commutator is no good and you're either going to be rebuilding it or replacing the motor. So this is what I find a, a little bit a little bit gentler way of cleaning it while preserving the life of the motor. And you're not going to notice any real performance difference here. So I will get the alcohol and we'll see what comes off of the commutator. Okay guys, so I got my alcohol and my Q-tips. I think I go through more Q-tips than anything in the process of restoring machines. Now, uh, I'm going to hold this in the light and see if it will show up on the camera for you all. Now, what I've got is I've wet the end of my Q-tip. These are those those uh, the Q-tip brand has a, I forget what they're called now, but they're a, they're a pointed and condensed Q-tip, and they, I like them better. I'm able to do more with these than the normal ones. Now, 
This is the commutator, and again, I'm only covering as deep as the brush is. I don't really need to touch the rest of it. And I'm just going to kind of just do this here. I'm not even turning the commutator. And look what comes off. That's just dust from the brushes. That's normal. The machine runs fine, but I want to go ahead and clean that off, right? And there'll still be a little bit of a stain that you can see on the commutator, right? It's not, you know, it's shiny, but not super shiny, but that's okay. I don't want to lose all that precious copper just to make it super shiny because the performance won't really change uh, in any way that you could measure. And you're going to have a much longer lived motor as a result. Now, uh, because there is not a traditional uh, brush shaft where I take the brushes out and I point the, uh, the, the cotton swab down, I'm coming in a bit of an angle here. Now, if you set the motor down, let's change our camera angle, and I'll show you another way to kind of speed this process up. See if we can get our zoom right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'll get another one. I just swap them out if they get, if the cotton swab gets soiled. So again, I've got the swab. I'm going to take the, uh, the worm gear over here, right? And I'm going to turn it. I'm going to simply take my cotton swab and again, only go in as far. Well, you'll see the commutator right here to the right of this brush holder. And I'm going to take the cotton swab and I'm just going to go in as, as deep as the brush is, which is about a quarter of an inch. That's all I need. And I'm going to hold just a you know, light pressure, nothing, nothing dramatic. And I'm going to turn as I turn the worm gear and I can kind of roll the swab and I'm coming all around and you see, I'm actually not getting that much on this thing. This, this is not, uh, this motor is not particularly dirty. I've seen worse. I'll come in with the clean end and do it again. And just, again, just slowly kind of roll. And as I turn it, the commutator turns and I'm able to go over it with my alcohol cotton swab. And again, you know, if it were dirtier, you'd see more come off of there. And honestly, this, you know, the motor's actually going to run without me even doing this. But if you really want to be extra thorough about it, you can go in and you can see, uh, you don't have to keep doing this until the cotton swab is perfectly white. You know, it's, it's getting less, uh, less dark here, more of a, a gray. Uh, use your own judgment for this. You know, you go over, if you roll it around a few times on, and you've got these alcohol cotton swabs, that's really all I really need to do here. I'll pull it up. Can't really see what I've got in my camera angle here. And you'll see, let me see if I can hold this and the flashlight at the same time. And you'll see, you can see the commutator now, and you'll see the edge is shiny copper. The path, about a quarter of an inch in, you see where the brush is pushing on there. And I've cleaned up what's there. there like I say, you're gonna see some residual staining but I really, uh, again, I have, over the years, I've decided that I would prefer to simply use the alcohol method, get it clean, but I don't want to sand and grind it. It's just not worth it because you, it's just a shame to really shorten the life of a motor just to get that copper shiny. Uh, I just don't think it's necessary. And obviously they were designed to work without them being constantly sanded because many of these, many of these old machines run and they've never had their commutator clean. So don't. Don't, uh, I wouldn't over, get overly uh, anxious about that. So there you go. That's, we have cleaned and inspected the brushes. Okay. Now, um, if the brushes uh, are too short and need replacing, uh, again, I'll do a video on that when I do a brush replacement on one of these, but they're really not bad. Um, and you simply put the brush in if you have a new one and then this little see it. Uh, how close am I? Okay, this little, this little J, little, this little hook here that's attached to the wire, that, that hook comes out and you can actually remove the, uh, the uh, brush holder and change out your brushes. And then you put the brush holder back in, you put the clip and it holds it in place. It's actually a cool design. Uh, it's different from any other, but it certainly works. And uh, they are, uh, like I say, very hardy motors typically, but again, like anything else, you've got to inspect everything when it gets to be a certain age. Now, uh, next video, I will talk about the bearings, greasing the bearings, and this will be especially true um, 
when we get to the worm gear end. And you can see here, I think the grease on this, this plastic piece, somebody just squirted you know, in thinking they were getting into the bearing. They really weren't. It's actually down below this level here. And uh, there's a way to get in there. But right now, I basically wanted to focus on just going in, inspecting your brushes, cleaning the commutator. Again, much simpler than if we were doing this on, uh, I'm gonna get this old grease off of the Bakelite. It doesn't belong here. It's of no use. The Bakelite doesn't need lubrication. Uh, people do the strangest things. They're trying to do well. They're trying to take care of their machine and they, they uh, actually a lot of how to lubricate uh, a machine back in 1951 is in the owner's manual. You didn't necessarily have to go to the dealer. You could do a lot of your own stuff if you chose. Or you could have a service agreement and Singer would send out their trusted mechanics to work on your stuff. Uh, but anyway, that is how you basically go in and inspect your brushes, clean your commutator. Uh, like I say, I'll make another video and we'll start talking about uh, the bearing. You have a bearing up top uh, on the worm gear and we'll take a look at that. Thanks for watching guys. It's part of a motor series I've been talking about forever and Hopefully we're uh, finally getting around to doing it and I hope that was helpful for you all. We'll see you next time.